Hi, I'm Alex, and I like to talk about stuff. And I promise you, the title isn't clickbait. I do have an answer for whether or not gear matters, but it requires some explanation, and that's why you gotta stick around to the end of the video. And if you like these kinds of videos, leave a like and put a comment down there letting me know what other stuff I should talk about because I'm always looking for new topics to talk about. And I think if you find this video interesting enough to stick around to the end, you'll want to hear me talk about something else in the future. So that's my pitch. Thank you for listening. If you don't like it, I hope you had a good time. I'll see you next time. But for everyone else, let's get started. Uh, so does gear matter? Well, to talk about it, I got to give some context about me. I am a commercial photographer that has worked in both the stills and video industry uh, for like 15 years professionally. I've been doing this a long time. And in that time, I've been a stills photographer doing commercial stuff like portraits, headshots, product photography, whatever. But I've also worked in the video industry doing like TV commercials. So I've been a DP, second unit director, first unit director, uh, director, camera operator, uh, grip gaffer prop stylist like I've I've worn all the hats in the in the industry aside from like makeup and wardrobe so I have a lot of experience with this stuff and I also have a lot of experience with YouTube because before I was doing stuff pro professionally in the commercial industry I was doing stuff amateurishly uh, or as an amateur on YouTube like before YouTube was owned by Google YouTube and more recently I've been working as a YouTube video editor full time for like the past year. And before that, I was also editing YouTube content professionally for four or five years. So I've been doing all of this stuff for a long time and I've been on both sides of the fence and I am a man of both sides of the equation, baby. So I think that gives me kind of a unique perspective on this question. And it's something that's come up a lot recently or in the past few years in the YouTube industry. You know, YouTube content creation has really blown up. And part of what prompted this conversation and why I wanted to record this video was I was scrolling through YouTube last night and, uh, you know, just looking for new videos to watch because I couldn't fall asleep. And I found this a video by this guy. He's a 20 year old college student that dropped out of college to start a production company and he started his the video he uploaded about it was like him documenting the process of going from nothing to something and so far the first video has been he shot a sizzle reel with his iphone shopped it around in cold calls and emails to potential clients someone got back to him they sent him product and then they ghosted him so he shot a spec ad sent it to them and hasn't heard back and that's where that's what we're waiting on episode two for it i'm on the edge of my seat dude upload please i need to know what happened but i'll leave a link in the description to that video but so it like it was like kind of this eureka f moment for me that put this whole conversation in pr into perspective because five or ten years ago like before youtube was really a big medium for professionals that guy's trajectory would have been to quit college, shoot a sizzle reel with like a DV camera or something, you know, something low budget, shop it around, someone would have thrown him a bone, you know, give him a job, and then he could shop that around as like the example of his work. And it, it would just snowball to the point where, you know, maybe one day he's shooting enough jobs that he can afford to start his own production company and shoot for himself. But in the, in the age of YouTube, he can upload a video about trying to do that and it gets a million views and ah, uh, the smoke signals should be going up. Hey, you just started your production company with a channel that gets a million views per video, dude. Just keep doing that. And it's like, he is now a, a video creative professional because that is like a monetizable, livable amount of views to get on content. And I don't know where it's going to go from here. Like I said, we're waiting on the next video, but like, mission accomplished you congratulations you have a production company and so it really opened my eyes to this conversation because it made me think about it from both sides of the you know the before and after of youtube and i think in the commercial world when people ask does gear matter really what they're asking is or what they're talking about is do the specifications of the gear meet the specifications of the job like if the client wants a to shoot a TV ad that's 4K, 24 FPS. Maybe they want to throw in some slow-mo, so you're going to need a 4K, 48 FPS or 60 FPS camera. And uh, does the camera do it? Then that's the camera you use, and that's the production world. 
Uh, and in a lot of time, a lot of situations, the the DP or the director will have gear that they prefer to use or they own or they rent a lot, so they'll use that. But they're never not going to use something that meets the specifications of the job. Like that's that's the target. That's all they care about is is it good enough to you know dot our dot our eyes and cross our t's with the client's needs. And when the answer is yes, that's the gear they use. It doesn't matter if it's Sony, Canon, Fuji, Nikon, Panasonic, Red, whatever. They'll just use whatever they're comfortable using that fits the specifications of the job. And there are plenty of gear snob commercial guys out there that will like raise their nose to anything by Sony or Canon, or if it's not a cinema lens, it's not good enough, blah, blah, blah. But ultimately, all anyone cares about in the commercial industry is are the specifications good enough to meet the, the needs of the job and the problem with youtube is when youtubers ask this question they're asking it in a vacuum because there's no client the client is the infinite quality scale that is youtube you know youtube is an evolving platform that now supports 8k 60 fps like crazy absurd uh, resolutions and frame rates and stuff and you can just upload mind-blowingly high quality content on YouTube if you know what you're doing and so it's infinite you know the specifications of the job when you're shooting YouTube content are what can you afford you know and so for youtubers really when you're asking does gear matter what you're asking is how much am i going to have to compromise to shoot this video am i going to have to give up 4k because my camera crops when i shoot 4k or do i have to give up on shooting in 60 fps because my camera only does 24 you know those are the questions you're really asking and i think ultimately when it comes to both sides you know the commercial and the youtube side of stuff gear doesn't matter as long as it meets the needs of the job. And even then, it should be a totally impersonal, transactional thing. You know, you shouldn't be deeply invested in Canon or Nikon or Sony or blah, 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 blah. All that matters is the specifications. And I think for YouTubers that are struggling with this question of like, what gear do I buy? How high do I go? You know, what resolution uh, do I shoot at? What you have to do is be like, set your ceiling, pick a ceiling to hit. You know, there's that, the scene in Willy Wonka where they're, uh, they're going up in the, in the glass elevator and they're going to hit the glass ceiling or whatever. And they're freaking out. They're like, oh my God, the glass ceiling, blah, blah, blah. It's, you know, and every YouTuber is just, they're looking through the glass ceiling and they don't even see it's there. And the 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 twist is hitting the glass ceiling is actually a good thing because it means once you hit it you're free you can do whatever the hell you want because you're in an elevator that can fly baby and you broke through the ceiling so my advice is pick a ceiling is it 4k 60 fps and that's a high ceiling go buy a two thousand dollar camera body and some nice lenses and you're good to go doesn't matter what brand you pick just as long as it does what you want it to you're good to go they're all good enough trust me <laughs> um because once you pick that ceiling and you hit it, you're not worried about hitting it anymore and you're free to shoot whatever the hell you want. And you won't think about it and you'll just go out and shoot stuff instead of, you know, mulling over Amazon wish lists and B&H gear recommendations for days on end. You'll just get the gear and you'll go shoot something. And I think ultimately that's what's most important, just shooting something. You know, all of the best people on YouTube they just shoot and shoot and shoot stuff and they document everything so that they can tell a really cohesive story because at the end of the day when it comes to arts and and the visual medium that is video and stills the most effective content is the content that can convey something you know it's a story it's it's showing an experience it's like connecting with the audience in a way and any gear can do that you know if the video by the guy I talked about in the beginning of this video can shoot a sizzle reel on his phone, upload it to YouTube and get a million views because he's telling a story about why he shot the sizzle reel and like what happened because he shot it. Like it's a really engaging, heartfelt video. It's good enough. That That's all you need. Like, yeah, of course, you're not going to go shoot a TV commercial with an iPhone because that's ridiculous. 
but there's nothing stopping you from doing it. You know, yeah, you might get like laughed at or people might not take you seriously when you show up with like a cinema camera lens adapter on your phone to shoot a commercial, but like Apple's doing it. And that's not to say they don't have a whole production crew behind that iPhone with, you know, incredible lighting and all sorts of set design and crew and blah 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 and yeah of course they got like an anamorphic adapter on the can on the iphone with a really special lens and blah 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 there's all this extra stuff but at the heart of it it's just an iphone and i'm not a fan of those ads i don't think what apple's doing is okay i think it's wrong to say that like the iphone is like you know some kind of like movie making steve jobs level like oh we we cracked that nut it's all down to the people hitting the button and something I learned from my dad, uh, that who is also a photographer, and it's ingrained in my brain forever, is that the easiest part is hitting the button. You know, this is a Nikon F3, one of the best cameras ever made. I could go shoot a job with it tomorrow. You know, and when I'm hitting that button, I'm getting the shots I want, and everything's great. But everything before and after hitting that button is going to be the real nightmare. And that's true. If I wanted to shoot film, the nightmare is I got to, you know, get a client on board with shooting film which means they got to be okay with slower product uh, turnaround time and they got to be okay with me charging more because film costs money and then i got to find someone to scan it and that costs money and blah 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 but there's all sources the similar problems when i hit this the button on this camera which is a fuji xc4 it's a digital camera i gotta go through pre-production i gotta find models or locations and blah 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 before i can even start taking pictures so when after i take pictures i gotta spend days editing and i gotta turn around super fast because it's digital and everyone expects me to turn around super fast so the nightmare is never the gear it's always everything before and after using it and so pick your ceiling and hit it and then you'll be free just pick whatever resolution and frame rate you want to shoot at and you'll be free to shoot whatever the heck you want to shoot so I feel like that answered the question, does gear matter? Did it for you? Let me know in a comment. And uh, if you guys want to see more videos like this, please let me know in the comments because I just want to talk and I don't want to go and produce super high quality think pieces about this stuff. I just want to be like, hey, I'm a guy that has this level of experience and this is my thought on the thing. So there it is. <laughs> Thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.